Hey, hello, I'm Tommy Chong. If you want something really nice in your laboratory, buy Durachill. I'm telling you, if you're not using this Durachill, you're not really in the pot business. You're just on the fringe of it. So if you really want to get serious, man, this is what you need. You need a Durachill in your life. You've got the technology here to have the cleanest, purest, healthiest product. I'm impressed. You want me to sell this? Buy it. Try Durachill or else. If your chiller's down, you ain't making money. And you heard it from me, Tommy Chong. Brought to you by PolyScience. Tech Talks. I'm Patricia Miller, Executive Editor with Cannabis and Tech Today. We're filming on site at MJ BizCon 2023. We're at the PolyScience booth. Special thanks to our title sponsors, PolyScience. So joining me today is Milan Patel, Milan Patel, <laughs> uh, CEO and co-founder of Pathogen DX. I'm thrilled to speak with you. Thanks for having me, Trish, and I appreciate being on Tech Talk here. Kind of a tech talk. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You've got some really cool tech to talk, so I'm excited to dive in. Yes. Tell our listeners a bit about your company. Yeah, we're a, a basically a biotech company. We make uh, testing kits that are specifically focused on pathogens. Pathogens are bacterial, fungal, and viral organisms that basically contaminate product. And we have, uh, you know, our customers are basically cannabis testing labs. And we sell equipment and testing kits to over 120 cannabis testing labs across 33 different states. Wow, that's immersive. Uh, and are you based in uh, Arizona? Yes, we are. We're, um, we're headquartered in Scottsdale, but all of our team, all, you know, where every all the development happens and where we manufacture the kits, they all are in Tucson. I love that. Well, so... Can you tell us a bit about your, it's DNA-based molecular testing tech. Yes. It's a mouthful, yeah. but I'm sure you can make it a bit more accessible for us. Yes, absolutely. So what this, what molecular is, is there's either DNA-based, if it's bacterial or fungal, in every organism there's your, your genes effectively, and within the genes you've got DNA, uh, or cells within the cells you've got DNA, and if it's virus, like hop latent virus, which cannabis growers have been experiencing, basically that's RNA. And so the test basically is, a, the technology is very disruptive and novel and inventive, meaning innovative. And what it does is it, it enables, it's able to get to um, interrogate, you take any particular, if you get flou cannabis flower, you're effectively able to identify cells that are either bacterial like E. coli or salmonella or aspergillus, and then in those cells, you crack open those cells and you get to the actual DNA. And when you get to the DNA, you're able to quickly identify what type of pathogen is, is in, that, uh, in that sample. As opposed to, you know, jute, the Petri dish, which we're all familiar with in our high, in our high school science, uh, you know, when we're doing high school uh, biology classes. That's 140 years old and Petri dish testing takes usually three to five days, depending on whether it's bacteria or fungus. And so molecular testing can get it done in a much shorter time, much more accurately and much, fa you know, much obviously in our case, we're able to look at, look at both bacterial and fungal um, organisms in the same single well test. And that's what's unique about the Pathogen DX technology. So how are you bringing automation to, to the testing space? It's a big deal in terms of labs are facing a lot of turnover, just so essentially what we're doing is now we brought on new new technology called the Okta. It's an automated sample prep. So when you take one gram of flour, you put it in a like a wall pack bag. It's like a Ziploc bag with some buffer in it, basically uh, molecular grade water. And then you you squeeze it ten times, and then you you just draw about a little bit of the juice off it. What's it? What is what's happening is on the flour. If there's any kind of bacterial or fungal uh, contamination, the cells come off of the 
the flour material into the, into the fluid. Then you take that and you put it into a little strip of eight, eight different wells. They'll take eight samples, push it in, press a button, and you walk away, you come back, and it'll come back. It'll have a, what is called purified DNA. That DNA will then go into a PCR step. When we did COVID, everybody took a PCR test, right? right. That's sort of similar in what we do in terms of, you know, cannabis molecular testing. And so we, we launched that Okta automation that significantly reduces, you know, hands on time, lab tech cost. Even in this particular case, you only use one tip, which is a plastic tip, to reduce the amount of environmental plastic waste. I love that. When COVID happened, they said that basically there was five, almost five times greater plastic environmental waste going into landfills because of PCR testing. Wow. So what we did is we said, let's, let's, whoops, what's, what's, uh, eliminate the number of tips that you're using per sample with the Okta and Okta only has one tip. And that, That's that wonderful. drives almost an almost 87% reduction in environmental plastic waste. Oh, I applaud you for that. That's excellent to hear. Yeah. So what kind of reactions are you getting from, from clients? Well, so we've got uh, quite a bit of success with, you know, multi-state lab operators in implementing it primarily because they're, they're operating multiple labs. And then, you know, uh, they're starting to see a lot more adoption with that type of technology. We are seeing labs actually going to a more automated solution. And I think it's the right solution, the right, right direction to head in. And I'm happy to say we've seen about, you know, 20 to 30% growth overall for the year because of that particular technology. In a year, all yeah. right. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. That's wonderful. It's good, right? It's good to see some growth in, in the year. Yeah. I mean, it's been pretty choppy, to, to be honest with you, given where we're at. Absolutely. I think everyone's feeling that this year. Yeah. So I love to hear about successes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. And was the uh, environmental benefit just a, a, an unintended side effect or were, was that an intentional, uh, deliberate effort to, to cut back on that plastic waste? I think it was, um, you know, it was a deliberate, it was a deliberate move primarily because I think it's the next frontier frontier in terms of innovative technologies. You know, you got to get to a point where people have been talking about climate change and environmental sustainability. Yeah. So using less plastic that winds up in landfills or basically incinerators, you know, is, is sort of the goal of what we need to head towards in terms of can you, can you get the same test done with less, you know, less materials, less, less consumables? And that was the primary goal when we developed the Okta. Absolutely. I think it's got to be part of the, the processes, the systems and planning for, for more companies now. How, how can we make this a part of our everyday operations? Yeah. Um, we were speaking with the CEO of PolyScience yep. yesterday, and he said it's not something you can say we're going to focus on the environment today yep. and not tomorrow. <laughs> right. You've got to work it in from the, from the base. So I appreciate that effort you're putting in. Yeah, and I think there's a there's also a and brilliant point. If you take a talk about the next generations, you know they are more environmentally conscious. To be honest with you, I mean, if you got lab techs that are 20, 30 years old, they they're growing up in an in a in a world where, you know, environmental, uh, you know, conservation and sustainability is sort of a pri you know a primary objective for them as opposed to, you know, the baby boomers to a large degree. We were burning fossil fuels and, you know, we're starting to shift, see that shift, you know, towards that. So, you know, if we want to be successful, we have to cater to that, you know, that that need. And and it's a, it's not even a, a luxury. It's a given. We have to achieve that given where what we're what we're experiencing from a climate change and an environmental perspective. Absolutely. Beautifully said. <laughs> I appreciate that point. Yeah. <laughs> You deserve a choice in your growing media. With VitaWool, you finally have one. VitaWool plugs, blocks, and slabs are made from 70% recycled content here in North America and give you the precision and control you always get from your growing media with the customer service you've never gotten. See why more growers are switching to VitaWool, get a spec sheet, and join the movement at vidawool.com. So tell me what 2024 looks like for you. What are you excited to see kind of on the horizon? 
So we continue to innovate. Great question. You know, we continue to innovate the platform. Uh, the good news is with Okta, you can actually do one sample prep for, you know, any and all the tests that cover pretty much any, any jurisdiction's regulatory requirements. So instead of having two or three systems which are con co competitors need, we have one platform, one system. And it's equipment agnostic, meaning we don't really dictate that it has, you, you know, they have to buy a specific OEM branded equipment. So any lab, lab, PCR lab or molecular PCR lab equipment can work off of our test kits. That's, That's number one. So you're really becoming more agnostic from that perspective. The second thing is driving more simplicity, you know, in the, te in the testing, more automation, and then folding in besides the regulatory testing that's important for, for safety and quality and health, the, the plant pathogens. So the growers are experiencing a lot of issues related to, you know, these plant pathogens, whether it's Boitritis or Fusarium, it's like um, powdery mildew, okay. or like uh, HLV, which is hop latent virioid. And those are yes. identifying those earlier for them is a key thing within within their, you know, their crops and the cultivation facilities, because that's where the biggest economic value comes in. So if the labs can do both, uh, you know, regulated testing as well as plant pathogen testing, you know, offer the same equipment set, that's basically a big deal. And that's our goal in 2024 is one platform, you know, one workflow, multiple different tests simplifies the efficiencies for labs and provides greater opportunity within not just, you know, regulated uh, testing for, uh, for states for safety, but also for the growers in terms of having, you know, high quality plant, uh, healthy plants with respect to no diseases on that front. And that's our focus. Uh, would you mind talking a little bit about the hop latent viroid? Because it's something I I just became familiar with in the past year, uh, didn't realize what an immense impact it's having on the industry. And I think when we talk about sustainability, um, something we have to be cognizant of is the resources we're putting into these plants uh, are immense. And when you lose a crop to viruses, the, the waste is so expansive. So would you mind touching a bit on how that's impacting the industry, the uh, hop latents? It's a massive, it's a, it, you know, some of the statistics that are out there are pretty staggering. They're saying that it was, it's about a four, you know, three to four billion dollar impact overall, wow. you know, and that's just, I don't want to say that's a tip of the iceberg because the industry is pretty large as it is, but to a larger, to, you know, it, you are having, you know, it, two years ago, I think in California, they sort of said, and this was a statistics that they said 80% of the growers had hop latent viroid outbreaks. That's 80% of the growers. Unbelievable. And so it's it's a big deal. They, they really cannot, they don't have any kind of, you know, remediation technology or, you know, irradiation technology to address that problem. And, the, you know, you, it's almost like it's asymptomatic, meaning you don't really see, yeah, you know. It's kind of the, subtle. Right, it's subtle. So when we were talking about, when we were talking about COVID, you know, where somebody was positive because of asymptomatic, you you know, you, there's no viral load in the test. You can't see it, but we have a very sensitive test for that. But the thing is, it's asymptomatic. The plant looks healthy, but you can't tell. And then suddenly, boom, it just it spreads like wildfire. Yeah. So, you know, I think at the end of the day, science is proceeding forward in trying to address that problem, but it's just like viruses tend to mutate. And so the one thing, Around that is we, we're also trying to watch for, you know, minor mutations around HLV, working with some of the plant path pathologists, but it it's continues to be a big problem. Now, if you see what happened, like from two years, this past year, you're starting to see Northeast, the Northeast growers having huge outbreaks on that front. So economically, it's, it's, it's catastrophic for a grower or cultivator to go through that, given the, how costly it is to to basically grow and cultivate the pro, uh, the plant, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So for our listeners, where can they go to follow up Pathogen DX is doing and kind of keep up with some of these innovations you're doing in the testing space? Well, our number one place is actually our website, www.pathogendx.com. You'll see, you know, our what we do in terms of our platform, what we're, how we address both the safety 
human regulated testing across the different states. You'll also see what we have in terms of for cultivators and growers, both like the viral testing as well as environmental swab, air and surface testing. So in that particular case, growers also have the ability to work with their labs or directly with us to actually get their either their facility tested because that's where, you know, everything starts at the end of the day. It's just like having, you know, the premise of a dirty bathroom. If you don't clean your bathroom every week, it's going to start to grow mold, right? At the end of the day, <laughs> yeah. it's a humid place. There's moisture, there's light. There's sometimes in the, if you're in the Northeast, there's heat as well, right? right? In the wintertime. So that's, that's, that's a perfect Petri dish or incubation for that. So if you go to our website, that's a first start. We're, we're on LinkedIn and on Facebook and on Instagram. You'll, you just have to type in our handles with respect to at pathogendx.com and you'll, you'll be able to find us. Some excellent insights. I really appreciate it, Milan. Thank you for chatting with us. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's been yep. our pleasure. Well, for Cannabis Tech Talks, uh, I'm Patricia Miller, and we'll sign off there. Until next time, stay elevated. Stay elevated.